All right, welcome to section six. In this section, we're going to learn about relations and um, how they're related to the variables and equations that we've been talking about before this. Uh, I want to jump ahead, actually, in the notes before we do the vocabulary words, because almost all the vocab in this section has to do with one particular way of showing a relation. So first, I want to jump ahead to the four ways that you can show a relation so you kind of have in your mind this idea. So just two slides ahead. So there are four ways to show a relation. You can show relations using graphs, using equations, using tables, and using what are called mappings. And I'm going to show you all four of those. But I just want to emphasize that these vocabulary words that we're using, not all of them, but most of them, deal only with the graphical representation of a relationship. So um, when we go through the vocab, I'll be kind of showing you these apply to the graphs, and then other things might apply to the equations or the tables. OK, so <clears throat> vocab. Uh, the first one is a coordinate system. So a coordinate system is a two-dimensional area with number lines, one vertical, one horizontal. They're typically called the x and y axis, which are your next vocabulary words. So it looks like this. You might have seen it before. So this horizontal line here, this is called the x axis. And in your notes near these vocabulary words, you should probably draw this little picture and label the x axis side to side. So the x axis is the horizontal line. This is representing your input. That's very important. Sometimes in different problems it'll be called a different thing besides x-axis, like it could be time or distance or some real-world thing like the number of shoes you bought, but it's always the input on the horizontal axis. And then the y-axis is the vertical one, and that's always your output. Okay, so input and output are the horizontal and vertical axis. So y-axis, the vertical, and this is always output. And in science class, you might have learned or be learning about the dependent and independent variables. So the input is always independent. Easy to remember because they both start with n. And the output is the dependent variable. The output depends on the input. The dependent variable depends on the independent variable. <clears throat> and lastly, this point in the center right here is the origin. The origin is just the center point of your graph. It doesn't mean things have to start there. Sometimes on a graphical representation of a function, the line will start not at the origin, but um, the origin is the center point zero, zero on your graph. All right, next thing, an ordered pair. These are also called coordinates on a graph. So again, this is still just graphical representation. It's a x comma y point on a graph and the first one is representing the input and the second one is representing the output. So you can use uh, an ordered pair in a table or something else but most commonly they're on a graph. The first coordinate is the x coordinate which is the representing value on the horizontal axis and the y coordinate is representing the value on the vertical axis. Okay. So let me make a quick example. If we have a graph like this, and I have the point 2 comma negative 1, that means the x value is positive 2. So on the x-axis, or horizontal axis, I go over two marks. And I'm somewhere, my input is somewhere over 2, and my output is negative 1. That's on the y-axis. So on the y-axis, I go down 1. So I've gone over 2 and down 1. So this point right here, is representing the point input value 2, output value negative 1. And you can plot any point that's an ordered pair or a coordinate on a, a coordinate plane. Okay, so all those definitions had to do basically uh, with a graphic representation. And now these last two are not. <coughs> so finally, relation, the definition of this actual section, it's a set of ordered pairs which can be represented many ways. So this ordered pair idea is just a relationship between the input and the output value. It gives you a pairing between what you're putting in and what you're getting out. And the relation is the overall rule. So uh, a single coordinate point is just the input-output pairing for that one spot. The relation is the input-output pairing for the entire graph or the entire table or the entire uh, mapping or the entire equation. So there's these four different ways, equations, graphs, tables, and mappings, that we can show a relationship between the input values and the output values. And what you want to be thinking probably in your head to make this more realistic is, 
um, some real world example. Like it could be how many hours you worked and how much money you got. Right? There's a relation there. The more hours you work, the more money you're going to get. So any two kind of quantities or ideas uh, that are related to each other will create a relationship which you can keep track of in one of these four ways. So an equation you've already seen, a graph I think you've already seen, and a table I'm pretty sure you've already seen. A lot of times it looks like this and we'll fill in values. Uh, but a mapping is one that you may not have seen before. So what is a mapping? A mapping is an illustration of how the inputs, which are called the domain, we'll talk about domain more, uh, get paired to the outputs, which is called range. So it's like a picture, basically. And I'll draw a picture for you of a mapping on the next page. So for now, just write this definition. Again, remember, you can always pause these videos to copy down definitions if you need to. All right, so these two vocabulary words, the last two for this section. I know that was a lot of vocab. I appreciate you sticking with me. Domain and range. Domain is the set of all possible input values. So the domain is going to be along the horizontal x-axis. And the range is the set of all possible output values, so along the vertical or y-axis. Okay, so a graph looks like this. A table, let me fill this in here. And a mapping. And I'm going to change colors, kind of fill in the rest. An equation has to have an equal sign. Okay, so let me change colors and fill in like the idea behind it. So a graph, you know, it's going to be some kind of line probably. We'll do a lot of lines and we'll also do some other ones, but for the most part we'll be doing lines. So what this tells me is if my input value is like right here, I can just go up here and over here and get that. So this is my input value and this is the corresponding output value for this point right here. So it's a relation between the input value and the output value. If I know my input value was say a 5, I can look at the graph and I can see my output value is whatever that is, you know, a 6 or something like that. So by seeing this line it tells me the relation between the input and the output. The second thing is an equation. A lot of equations will be like starting with y on the left hand side and then some equation with x's on this side. So here we have some input and here we have some output. So again this makes sense. If I tell you the x value, you plug it in, you compute the answer, and then you know the output or final value. Okay, A table, we usually write x, y, you could put input and output, something like that. And this is going to be a bunch of coordinate points. So for example, if we had this one over here, it would be input 5, output of 6. So 5 and 6. But there's other points on here. Maybe this point right here is input of 0, output of 1. So 0, 1. And then maybe we go over to the next point. And this is an input of 1 and an output of 2. And we can keep going. We can make a list of all these points. Um, and this complete table with the list of all the possible points um, maps out that relationship. Okay? Funny I used the word maps there because our next one is mapping. So a mapping takes these input values and shows you what the output value is by virtue of an arrow. So you have a list of all possible inputs, aka the domain. Maybe uh, maybe we have a domain like this, 50126. And maybe our outputs are 6, 1, 2, 4, and maybe that's it. So 5 maps to 6. What that means is the coordinate point 5, comma 6 is on the graph. 0 maps to 1. 1 maps to 2, but suppose hypothetically that 2 maps to 4 and 6 also maps to 4. While that may not make sense if you're thinking about how much hours you worked and how much you got paid, there are other situations where two different inputs can both give you the same output. Um, that's certainly possible. So mappings show the inputs or domain here. I'll even write that, domain. And then they show the output or range here, and then they connect with arrows whatever the input value maps onto. Um, and you could even have one input mapping onto two different outputs. That's possible. That would correspond to the point 0, 6 and the point 0, 1. So you could have 0, 6 and you could have 0, 1 both 
on this data table, then that means the input of zero has two different possible outputs. And that's okay in a mapping or a table or a, a graph or an equation. All of these are just relations between the input and the output. Uh, they have some kind of relationship. They're not random. Okay, that's it for uh, relations. Um, mostly the homework will be identifying whether something is or is not a relation or kind of understanding these vocabulary words. Um, Alright, see you in class.